Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending all this live Zoom event. And uh, right now is Thursday, May 26, 2022. And uh, this is a sort of an informal webinar. It's open to all our members. We are uh, Richard Avani, of course, will, uh, will be uh, the uh, special speaker. And although uh, this is sort of informal, he will, uh, Richard will start out by by going over the big picture about what's going on with the economy, with the interest rate, with the uh, Fed, uh, Federal Reserve, uh, with the uh, real estate market and what have you. And I will uh, also uh, co-present. And, uh, and most important of all, the people that are attending, you're, you're welcome to, uh, uh, to ask questions either verbally, show yourself on, your, on the video if you want, or you could, uh, on that chat box on the lower right hand corner, uh, you can you can type in your questions throughout the webinar. So uh, we would love to engage with our audience live uh, for change because we've been doing too many recorded video, especially Richard and I over the past couple of years during the pandemic. And uh, yeah, we we would love to uh, do the monthly you know quarterly club meeting that we used to have before the pandemic. I would love to do that, but honestly, uh, I, I keep hearing, you know, the uh, COVID-19 variant uh, keep on popping up everywhere, and it's just it's just a very challenging situation. So I don't know whether I should uh, commit to a, a monthly <laughs> club meeting in San Jose. I would love to meet with people, engage with every one of you one-on-one, -on -one, real live. Uh, I know video is great, Zoom is great, uh, it's, a, it's a good supplement to uh, what we try to do, but uh, I'm sure we should agree. I mean, we should, would love to attend our club meeting uh, like he has been you know, previously, so we could, uh, again, get the dynamics of uh, live interaction. <laughs> we all miss that, don't we? Uh, all right, without further ado, Richard, I know you're very, very busy. Uh, you got a lot of uh, uh, side gigs <laughs> you going on. I'd be at very fun side gigs. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're a professional race car driver, so... <laughs> How nice, how nice. Okay, so thank you for everyone attending and uh, the money Wing Yi, of course, from the Year of Listen Network and Richard Avani is from Supreme Lending and uh, he's an investment loan agent and he has helped many of our investors uh, to uh, finance their investment property over the years. And of course, of course so without further ado, so uh, yeah, the big picture is uh, from your end, Richard, uh, I know- right, uh, no, I, I made it. A lot of challenging situations going on, but uh, so let's talk about uh, you, you. You have anything uh, you want to get out of your chest, Richard? That are really more very very important that people need to uh, uh, be aware of. Uh, um, anything, Richard? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'd say the the big thing is, and everyone's I know paying a lot of close attention to what's happening with the Fed meetings and the rates and. You know, there still is that misconception generally with consumers out there that the Fed rate ties to mortgage rates. Mortgage rates are based on the 10-year Treasury bond, which is pretty much already doubled this year along with mortgage interest rates. Um, and the Treasury bond has moved up well in advance of the Feds actually um, increasing their interest rates. And, uh, you know, important thing to note, is in the last week and a half, rates have started moving down a little from their highs that they hit. The 10-year treasury bond, which pretty much closed over 3.0 is now down in the 2.7s. So rates have come down a little bit uh, from the highs, maybe down a quarter percent or so, which is great because you know we're back to the mid 5% range for interest rates, whereas for a long time, they were starting to get close to the high fives and the sixes which obviously, you know, changes things a little for us as investors. So um, take advantage of this little dip. We'll see in the coming days, obviously, if this dip is going to continue and how big it is. But uh, I definitely, if you're on the fence, you know, with where they're trending now, it's a good time to start running a property up. That way you can strike and lock the rate at the opportune time. Yeah, Richard, can you share with the audience as of today, what is the investment loan rate if you put 25% down payment uh, on a single family home to four unit? Uh, what are the, 
what's going on. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a little tough to do off the top of my head. I'm not in front of my computer at the moment, but 25% down single family homes, you can get low to mid fives. 20% down is going to be closer to the high 5% range. Um, you know, keep in mind, historically, at least when I got in the business, primary home rates were in the you know mid to high sixes, rental homes were in the low sevens. So historically, we're still at a low point, but you know, we were spoiled essentially the last two or three years with the rates we had for investor loans being in the high threes, right? It was nuts. And I know most of you are probably kicking yourselves for not buying more when you had the opportunity with those low rates. I One thing I can tell you is I don't think those rates are coming back for a long, long, long time. And I say that to the dismay of my business, obviously, right? I'd love them to come back, but, you know, high threes on a rental, uh, whoever took advantage of it when they had the opportunity, uh, definitely struck gold, you know, but they're still low overall. Yeah. So Richard, what about, the, I know you do not have a crystal ball no one else does, but uh, let's project for the rest of this year, 2022, uh, even uh, 2023, the next a year and a half, what do you see? Are you, you see uh, uh, the Fed can raise the interest rate uh, substantially, or they're going to they gonna subside if, they, if the inflation is... Is being stabilized. Maybe the Fed will even lower the interest rate slightly from five percent to maybe, hopefully, to maybe four and a half percent. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the the Fed increases are going to slow, but they obviously will still happen. Um, what that means for mortgage rates, obviously, is uh, it, they don't have a direct correlation. My hope is that mortgage rates in the next year and a half uh, will kind of plateau from where they are. Obviously, we've seen so much of an increase in such a short period of time um, that I, I can't imagine that they'll dramatically go higher. Uh, if anything, I plan for, you know, maybe a quarter percent higher than where they are today. But, you know, fingers crossed that ends up being the case. Well, Richard, let me ask you this. Uh, I know uh, Jerome Powell, Jerome Powell is the uh, current Fair, uh, Federal Reserve Chairman. And, you know, his decisions, uh, <laughs> Uh, impacts the economy and everything else, with the market, everything. So do you think if you put yourself in his shoes, I mean, he, he needs to realize, right? If, they, if he raises interest rate to uh, six or 7%, that will totally crash the economy. It will go into, go into a steep recession. So there's no way in his right mind, uh, Jerome Powell and the Fed, to, uh, to do something that extreme, right? I mean, that's... In, you would think that. I mean, you know, he, he knows what's going on in the risk market. He knows right now, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's very challenging. So, so you put yourself in his shoes. There's no way he can do that, right? I mean, uh, if he's raising interest rate just to stabilize the inflation. Uh, so, so he, you know, he, he, he can't go overboard with this. Otherwise, the whole economy is going to crash, <laughs> right? I agree, but you know it's definitely a balancing act given where, as you said, inflation is, and obviously the Fed needs to be very strategic about how they raise interest rates. But you know, I I think it does need to happen. Also, as we all know, the cost of everything has gone up dramatically, and the Fed say inflation is eight to ten percent. You know, most of us on the ground, all of us, see that it's much higher. Right, the last time uh, you gone to the store and buy groceries, it's almost more expensive than actually going and eating out. Um, and, you know, inflation in all reality is closer to 20 or 25 percent. And, you know, the only way really to combat that is by raising rates, um, you know, but hopefully inflation will slow and the Fed's uh, raising rates will also kind of moderate from here moving out. But kind of is a balancing act. I don't envy uh, his job, that's for sure, because so much lays kind of in the balance of raising him enough to combat inflation, but not too much, uh, obviously, to just completely crash the economy. Well, uh, 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 Richard, you and I obviously are not an economist, and but you, you always hear, uh, you know, some some naysayers, some doom and bloom YouTube uh, YouTubers, whatever wh whoever they are, and the news media, right? They always they always you know dwell on the negative headlines. You and I. Richard, uh, we've been in, in this realistic game for a very, very long time. I mean, I've seen this kind of negativity headlines uh, uh, right now, and I've seen it in the past, in the past down cycle. So it's always, you know, the negative headlines really, uh, to me, it's just, it's just uh, he has, 
a lot of people are very weak and very gullible. They believe all the negative headlines and uh, that, that really affect a lot of people's uh, emotional uh, stability. So, uh, but, but, you know, it is a recession. I mean, even if there's a recession, I mean, you know, some people, you know, predict there may be one, but I, I don't think so because we have good job employment. Uh, good economic activities. Uh, there are more jobs, and there are available that to, to people that want want to get those jobs. So, uh, so you know, I mean, everything is go- doing well. I mean, we have record low inventory still, right? Uh, and uh, a lot of you know, a lot of homeowners they already refinanced a year ago, a year and a half ago, at less than three percent. So they're not going to sell their property and move up to a, to buy a house with five percent uh, interest rate, right? That's crazy. And then, then the builders are now building enough homes to meet the demand, right? Five percent interest rate right now is uh, is on historical basis. It's not really that bad if you look at you know past four years. You know, back in 1980s, we have up to 18 percent interest rate. What's that noise? <laughs> up to 18 percent interest rate back in the 1980s. Uh, so right now, as five percent, it's not really. It's not gonna. It's not doom and gloom. So. So what are your thoughts on that, Richard? <laughs> oh, we lost your verbal, Richard. There we are. So right. yeah, I mean, it's definitely far from doom and gloom. I think anyone who actually owns real estate right now uh, will sing quite a different story, right? Rents are the highest they've ever been. Um, there's people lining up to buy homes. There's people lining up to rent homes. So I think all in all, um, the doom and gloom is more for people who aren't doing it yet or haven't, uh, you know, haven't done it or don't own any real estate. Because uh, anyone I talk to, I know anyone you talk to that actually has active holdings, you know, it's it's far from the doom and gloom. And, you know, I know you're still buying in real estate and so am I. And, you know, the question is to what what do we do if there is... Uh, a recession and you know to me it's dollar cost average just like securities right buy another one at a little bit of lower price and you dollar cost average real estate wealth is built in the long term not in the short term um and also i think we're seeing a huge influx right now of of investors that haven't invested in real estate before they've been so heavy in stocks and bonds and um you know we're seeing a different type of clientele that you know creates more competition for us as investors as well and the, that clientele are, you know, people that have, you know, made millions of dollars in the stock market, and now they want to put that somewhere tangible, and what's more tangible than real estate, right, and so they're coming in, putting 40, 50 percent down on these properties that we're all trying to buy, just as a safe measure, kind of to protect their asset and protect all of their investment and gains thus far, so, um, there are, it, it's, real estate definitely still is believed to be the wealth builder for the future. And uh, we're dealing with more and more fluent clients because they definitely see that, you know, the current economic environment, where do you put your money? And in my opinion, it's nice to put it somewhere that you can touch and feel versus, you know, having it in stocks and everything else, which is completely peaked out. And people, you know, and when I make that argument, of course, people are like, well, you know, real estate's peaked out too from, from historically where it's been. And, you know, yeah, that may be the fact, but, you know, you're investing on real estate based on the income it's creating, you know, with stocks most of the time. And granted, there are some dividend paying stocks out there, but with stocks, you're, you're, you're betting on, obviously, the price of that stock going up, you're selling it, and that's how you make your money. And that's, you know, the asset class that falls in, whereas obviously the real estate, you have the income proponent as well. And if you're in it long term, whether someone it's an appraiser says the property's worth 350 or 280 if you're not trying to sell it doesn't matter right what matters is you're getting rent paying your mortgage you're pocketing some of that and you know you're building wealth in the long term yeah richard i agree so i mean you know in, investors uh, uh goals and mindset are very different than a primary home buyers a primary home buyers all over the country especially for a first-time home buyers right uh, they they buying homes like five six seven eight hundred thousand dollars at uh, the interest rate increase from three percent to five percent makes a, diff- a big difference. Yeah, we agree. Maybe thirty percent of the primary home buyers are sitting in the sideline 
because they no can they can no longer qualify based on a higher interest rate. But as a real estate investor, I need to warn everybody, especially newbies out there who are very are paralyzed with fear from all these negative headlines. As a, a savvy real estate investors that you know, a lot of you are watching uh, our presentation, uh, Richard. I mean, as long as you buy property in a good market, you know the, the cash flow with five percent cap rate. As long as the single family homes are less than four hundred thousand, anywhere from fifty thousand to four hundred thousand, as long as you're able to uh, the rent to value ratio makes sense, right? I mean, with twenty five percent down payment on a three hundred fifty thousand dollar new construction home in Florida or Texas, if the rent if you get twenty two hundred dollar rent, I mean, uh, you get a little bit of cash flow, a couple of hundred dollars, but that's fine, right? It's okay because you apply your twenty to twenty five percent down payment. And then everything else will be gravy because, because we are becoming renters nation. The affordability in index is sky high. A lot of people cannot buy the home, homes anymore because of the higher interest rate. They will, they will become renters. They will be renting your homes that you're buying as an investor. So skyrocketing rent or catching up with the uh, skyrocketing prices, you still get some le decent cash flow. But once you put the 20 to 25% down payment and you put a renter, uh, a tenant in place, that tenant over time will pay down your mortgage, your debt obligations, right? And you, uh, uh, so even with slight negative uh, positive cash flow you have, don't, you know, don't worry about it because over time, your, your mortgage payment will be paid down by the, by the tenant and then you will increase your rent at 5% interest rate, right? And then you get some tax benefit and then uh, uh, from owning, and then uh, you know, your, your, your loan gets paid down by the tenant and you have a lot of equity down the road if you, so really in real estate investing is a multi-dimensional asset class, very, very attractive on a historical basis. So you make, you make a lot of money in many different ways. It's not only all about cash flow; it's all about appreciation and, and what have you, as long as you buy in the good markets in the South and Southeast. So that is my, you know, my big picture. So Richard, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, you really hit a key point, obviously, with rent inflation. Um, you know, if you look historically to rent, just take a little while to catch up to home price increases. Part of that's pretty common sense and logical, right? Most leases for a house are written in one to two year, three year increments. So house prices go up this year, next year, um, you know, the rents are kind of going to follow. And, you know, I've had Three properties come up uh, for lease here in the state. And two of them, the rents are $200 higher than they were rented out prior. And one of them, so keep in mind the cash flow total on these properties are only about 300 bucks. So getting a $200 increase on each property um, from 300 to 500 cash flow is a dramatic increase to ROI. And that's one thing that your pro formas aren't going to show you up front, right? Um, you're looking at our, your cash flow and return on investment today, not looking further down the line. And obviously, the other thing to keep in mind is every the return on amortization. Every month you make your mortgage payment, you're going to pay down more and more of that principal balance. And when you're a decade in, as I am, and you are in a lot of your real estate, you know, rents have doubled, that your cash flow rather has doubled from what you were getting, right? Because if you're getting 250 in cash flow and rents go up to 50, then you're getting 500 in cash flow. Um, plus, the rate at which you're paying down your down dramatically increases as well. Um, so, on a lot of my properties, you're making five, seven, eight hundred a month front end cash flow, um, and you're making even in terms of principal pay down. And that's where the wealth building aspect comes, obviously, from real estate. And regardless of the rate environment, that's still going to be there. Or the economic environment, that's still going to be a factor as well. You know, the longer you hold it, and if you're looking long term, um, it's really tough to lose. And part of that, of course, is making sure you do have some reserves, making sure you do have some liquidity to weather any potential storm. But most of the storms historically, even the last, you know, crash in 2008, 2009, um, or in prior, sorry, um, most of it was pretty short lived, right? You know, Values dropped very quickly. They hit a bottom, um, but then you know that bottom was established and they started moving up very quickly. So, yeah, well, well, on this economic, this was the market of very, very, very far different than the 2008 crash because right now, 
uh, with a record low inventory still, the, the inventory is even lower than last year right now. So we do not see any sort of a balanced market anytime soon. It'll be a few, few years down the road at the very least before you have a balanced six month supply of inventory. Right now, in most markets, I know every market is different. There are more than 400 MSA in metropolitan statistical uh, areas in the US and every market is very, very different. We all know that, but, uh, but most market right now is at only one month supply of inventory. This is mind boggling, all right? It, and the builders, even if they're building uh, sufficient homes uh, eventually, but a lot of those homes that the builder, that the national builders are building, they're selling at 400, 500, 600, 800 thousand uh, dollar uh, new construction homes, uh, very, very little entry level homes. So, as I'm, so, uh, so I see a continued low record inventory. Whenever you have, you know, low supply and high demand, you will get equity growth. You, you will get appreciation. So. As a, as a risk investor moving forward for the next five to 10 years, you buy right now at 25% down payment, you know, with, uh, you know, with a little bit of cash flow, that's fine. Uh, and then uh, you could expect appreciation from maybe five to 7% annual appreciation moving forward on a very conservatively uh, prediction of mine. And then uh, with the uh, skyrocketing rents every, all over the country, right? Inflation and all that. So, I could make the argument uh, with interest rate of only five percent, five and a half percent for investment finance, uh, loan financing. I could I could make the argument right now is one of the best time for uh, mom and pop real estate investors to buy cash flow properties in the area that we promote, which are you know you know you you do a lot of loans for our investors uh, in in uh, you know Austin and San Antonio, Texas, in Raleigh, Charlotte, North Carolina, in. Southwest Florida, Cape Coral, and Central Florida, uh, uh, and all the great markets that we have, and, and Alabama also in Buffalo and Niagara Falls. Those are uh, those markets will continue to uh, uh, to uh, have a lot of potential, a lot of a uh, lot of a lot of potential moving forward. So, uh, uh, if I can have your quick comment, then we can uh, entertain some some questions. We have like twenty more minutes for Q and A. For those of you who are, I'm sure you have some questions. Uh, any, any, any of your thoughts uh, you want to share, uh, Richard? Before we uh, open up for questions, if you can't hear me, I'm pleased to everyone. If I look like a bobblehead, it's because I am in the back seat of a car, and uh, we are losing reception here. Am I coming through clear, Seeming? Yes, yes, so far so good. Beautiful. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely side with what you're saying. Interest rates at five, five and a half percent still leave tons of room for growth. And you know we keep talking about inflation. There is no better hedge against inflation than a 30-year fixed. And even if we take the Fed's inflation rates uh, as being correct, which we know that's nonsense, but even at eight percent, if you're taking a five percent 30-year fixed, um, you're gaining three percent just in uh, the difference between inflation and the interest rate you're paying. So um, as good a time as any. Just inventory is obviously the the biggest struggle at the moment. Yep, that's right. But you know, working through a network, right? You guess, uh, you know, our investors so will get the benefit of uh, off the market uh, uh, investment. <laughs> no one else gets out there. So we've done all the work, all the hard work for you guys. All you gotta do is uh, take action and pull the trigger. So, so with the remaining uh, 15 minutes that Richard has, I know you're very good business, Richard. Thank you for your time, but. Uh, I would love to entertain some questions from the audience. Anyone out there, you can type in the chat box. You can verbally uh, uh, ask questions for those of you on the video cam. Okay. Hey Richard, I have a question. <laughs> it's me, Julie. Um, I, okay, used to sell real estate back when the dinosaurs ruled the world. And, but I remember there was some formula for reducing a 30 year mortgage down like if you paid so many extra principal payments a year or something like that do you know what that is and how much it would reduce like if you're playing a couple of extra pay principal payments a year how much that would take a 30-year loan down to i don't know 25 years or something yeah yeah i think what you're referring to is a bi-weekly payment option um mm -hmm. which essentially because of obviously if they take out the payment two weeks every two weeks versus once a month 
because of the amount of weeks in the year, you squeeze in an extra payment without really feeling the pinch. Mm -hmm. um, although you could accomplish the same thing on your own by just sending in one extra payment per year. And yeah, you're, you're correct roughly on the amount. Um, you know, utilizing that biweekly payment option or sending in that extra payment per year does knock off four, four and a half years off a lot, which is huge. And is you know, most people don't understand really how an, yeah, how an amortization schedule works. It's important to get acquainted with one because oftentimes, you know, if your payments on a rental property, fifteen hundred a month, sending in sixteen, seventeen hundred a month makes a huge impact on the total payback. Right, 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 right. Okay, that that helps. Thank you very much. Yeah, if I may, if I may say something about that, right. Uh, so depending on the size of your loan, right? Uh, one strategy you may want to do is uh, if you want to pay down your debt, you uh, like, like like Richard said, you, you pay down the principal, one extra principal per month. Uh, depending, uh, then you could uh, your thirty year loan, you could pay it off in about seven years or maybe even lower. But you know, Julie, you have a lot of small loans, right? Right. And right. You, what you can do, you can you you can use the positive cash flow you're getting from all your properties. And use those part of cash flow to uh, pay down the pay down mm. the mortgage. Pay oh, down, very good. Pay one extra principal per month from the part of cash flow, and your small thirty-year loan from Buffalo Niagara Falls will be paid off in about five to seven years. Oh, and, that's great! Yeah, and you become debt-free. You can live off the passive income. Uh, so mm. yeah, that's a that's a good. Idea. Not everybody want to do that. If you have mm. a large loan, that's much harder, mm. right? Yes, of course. Small loan, yeah. Small loans of a hundred thousand dollar loan, the hundred fifty thousand dollar loan. Yeah, you can do the uh, principal pay down acceleration and pay it off your thirty year uh, mortgage in about five to seven years. Right, uh, right. Thank you. That that helps. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another question here. Uh, somebody on the chat box: Are home pricing starting to come down? And with COVID easing, will there be some inventory or foreclosures coming on board? I'll quickly going to answer that. I do not see homes. Uh, or decreasing, <laughs> homes are not gonna come down in my mind because again, it's a matter of supply and demand. We still have record low supply of inventory on historical level and the demand is still pretty high even though a lot of people are, are cannot qualify anymore due to the uh, uh, higher interest rate. So foreclosure, I do not see uh, that many coming into the market. But the few that will come into the market in the next few years, that will be gobbled up just like any other properties out there because of the uh, low supply and high demand. So Richard, well, what are your thoughts on, on the, uh, the foreclosure market in the future? Uh, I mean, it, well, firstly, prices definitely are not coming down. As you said, it's pure supply and demand. And, you know, a lot of people were working with their signing contracts in the next year, forget about even this year. So, um, and as you said, any inventory that comes up will really get gobbled up. Um, in terms of foreclosure, short sale inventory, there's not a lot of it out there, you know? Um, Economy still good for the moment. Um, you know, we started hearing about mass layoffs across the country in a major recession. Um, maybe then would be the time to start paying attention to that. But most states' foreclosures and short sales take years to complete as well. So we're pretty far away from having a, a flood of, of distressed properties hit the market, even if we did experience a recession next month uh, for a while, you know, just with how the ju judicial process process is. Uh, we won't have an opportunity to buy some of those for quite a while. Uh, Richard, so if you're, you're sitting on the sidelines waiting for prices to drop or rates to drop, I mean, people have been doing that for years and they keep just regretting it. And, uh, you know, people ask me what I'm doing. And based on my past experience of not buying based on some fears that God knows where it came from that aren't necessarily logical, I continue to buy uh, every year because... Uh, you know, even Warren Buffett says, you know, being a part of the market, playing in the market is more valuable. And, and that's the way to experience gains versus getting stuck in analysis paralysis on the sidelines while, you know, 20, 30 percent yearly gains. Just... Yeah, Richard, I mean, a lot, a lot of a uh, lot of uh, investors and home buyers that they, they get paralyzed with fear. They, there's so much negativity out there. If you watch the YouTube videos, you will see, you know. People, uh, the YouTuber, YouTubers, they, is clickbait, meaning they, they put the word crash, they put the word downturn, they put they put the word foreclosure, whatever, and uh, those are just uh, very misleading information. So stay away from those real estate YouTube videos, clickbait, 
uh, they, they, uh, they just uh, very, very, very inaccurate, very misleading, uh, brainwashing, brain, brainwashes people. I see what's happening. And uh, the, you know, the news media, same thing, right? Negative news sales. And this is always, you know, this buzzwords out there, you know, downturn, recession, you know, you know, crash and uh, correction and whatever. It's just, uh, it's just paralyzing. <laughs> so Richard, I'm sure you heard, yeah, you, you feel the same way, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, so let me see what else. Any other questions out there? We are, we should have a, a mere 15 minutes left maybe. So, so do I, this will be, this videos uh, will, be, uh, will be recorded by the way. Any, anyone out there? So Julie, you have any more questions? <laughs> you know, I just wanted to make a comment. Um, and actually I kind of got the idea from another young man. You just interviewed C Wing. He's like right out of college and he just bought his first um, property. I just watched his video prior to getting on this. And he made a comment about the rents. Like I've been kind of stuck on, I want to get a certain number for cash flow. And it works when you're paying all cash, but it doesn't work so much when you're taking out a loan. But I think the point he said, and you guys kind of alluded to that on this call too, is that the rents, in, especially in Buffalo, are kind of low anyway. And there's a lot of room for increase in the loan amount. So I may not so I'm thinking I may not get the number that I'm looking for now, but but we do have a buy and hold strategy. And over time, I will get the number and then some, especially as I pay down the loans. So it's, it kind of helped give me a little more focus on moving forward on maybe some properties that I've been kind of like, maybe I don't want that because it's not meeting the number. But now I think just listening to you and Richard and the young man, I've forgotten his name, uh, uh, that makes sense, you know, just just go ahead and get it. It is cash flowing something. It may not be the exact number I want, but it will, because we're planning to hold it for a long time, it will eventually get to where we want it. Well, well Julie, here's what's happening. Okay, all the information that tells me, uh, based on my research lately, that, uh, you know, all over the country, uh, there's a lack of uh, uh, rental units available for people. And with the, uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the interest rate increasing, a lot of people are, cannot afford to buy homes anymore all over the country. So uh, they are they are renting. So we're gonna see more and more people renting than ever before. We're becoming renters nation. Mm -hmm. And we hear uh, in certain uh, markets like in Miami, they have increased the rent over the past couple of years to like 50% increase in rent, you know? And many areas are similar in Austin, in, in, uh, in other parts of Florida, I mean, you know, landlords are raising their rent 20, 30, 40% in California, same thing. I mean, it just does not pay to be a renter because they, you know, with inflation and they pay a lot higher rent. So us, uh, us uh, as landlord, uh, we, we, will, we expect to raise our rent uh, in, in a foreseeable future, five to 10% you know, right. Uh, right. in the next few years. So your cash flow. In your portfolio will get will be higher. Uh, I have to believe that. So so yeah. it's a great time to be a real estate investor these days because because low, like I said, low inventory, still very high demand. Even though uh, a lot of people can't buy anymore due to uh, affordability issues, uh, but uh, low you know you can you can expect equity appreciation, uh, rent to increase, uh, mm -hmm. and what more can you ask for? You you know. As an investor, you are buying whole at least 10 years into the future. So you don't care about the short-term fluctuation. It's just as long as you have a good quality tenant that mm -hmm. are, are making you wealthy by paying down your, your mortgages and what have you. Right. So it's just, Thank you. So on, on Richard uh, has to go because he's very busy with his professional race car racing season right now. <laughs> so uh, he is a... He is a he's, Here's a very good life. So uh, I'm going to conclude in the next few minutes. If, you, if there are no other questions, uh, this uh, podcast will be recorded. You will get the video in a few weeks. And uh, so again, my recap is that uh, right now as good as any to, uh, to become a real investor. Uh, there's no, you know, there's no reason for waiting. So uh, I know a lot of people are scared, but they need to overcome their fear and, and lack of courage and take action. We have the best market, as you know, Julie, right. uh, and there is. We have a great turnkey providers in all our markets. Uh, things are doing very, very well. So it's all about, you know, 
take action and uh, achieve your wealth. Thank you so much for attending this webinar. I uh, hope to see you guys soon in many other uh, events. Thank you so much. This is Si Wen Yi from the Yi Wilson Network. Have a nice day. I will see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.